Hi parents, thank you for checking out part 3 of common PSLE questions that involve ratio. I'm Elaine from Great Solution Jimmy Math. In this series of tutorials, I will be explaining ratio questions with difficulty levels from 1 to 3, 1 being the easiest. If you haven't watched our previous two videos on levels 1 and 2 ratio questions, I'll encourage you to do so as you'd require those skills in order to identify a level 3 question. So, how does a level 3 ratio question look like? When you're looking at the question, ask yourself, can we apply constant sight or constant total? Constant sight means one side of the ratio remains unchanged while constant total means that the total units should remain unchanged. If your answer is no, I can't apply constant side or constant total, then let's ask ourselves this question. Can we apply equal difference then? Keywords for equal difference questions are an equal number or the same number of items were removed or added. If you don't see these keywords, then your answer is no, it is not an equal difference question. Now, you're looking at a level 3 question where everything in the ratio has changed. In an everything changed ratio, we have to use the concept of units and parts to solve our question. Now, let's take a look at a level 3 question taken from Cedar Primary School prelim paper from last year, and it is worth 2 marks. The ratio of the number of men to the number of women at the CC in the morning was 5 to 1. After 95 men and 15 women left the club, the ratio became 4 to 1. How many men were there in the morning? Now, in this question, everything in the ratio changed. Okay, since a different number of men and women left the club, 95 men and 15 women, we cannot apply equal difference. We know that the number of men before and after is different, and the number of women before and after is different as well. The total number of men and the total number of women in the before and after situation is also different. Therefore, we also cannot use constant sight or constant total concept to solve this question. Alright, so in this case, everything has changed. Therefore, we need to use units and parts to solve this question. Alright, we would use units to represent the number of men and women before and parts to represent the number of men and women after. Why do we need to do that? Okay, let's just study the ratio for a while. 15 women left the club, yet in the before and after ratio, we see one unit of women here and one unit of women here as well. That does not make sense. Okay, the only thing that makes sense is that one unit here and one unit here is not the same. And that is why we use units for one set of ratio and parts for the other set of ratio. Since this is a before and after question, let's use the BCA model. Before, change, and after. In the morning, the number of men to women was 5 to 1. Then, 95 men left and 15 women left, giving us a ratio of 4 to 1 after. Alright, as mentioned earlier, we would use units to represent the before and parts to represent the after. So let's fill that in. and units for the before. Okay, now what we have to do is to rewrite these ratios in a statement form. And how do we do that? We would just do it chronologically, all right? For the men, there were five units of men at first, then 95 men left, 
leaving us with four parts of men. So from before to the change to the after, we are rewriting it into a statement. And we do the same for the women. There was one unit of women, then 15 women left, leaving us with one part of women. Now what we have to do is to use the concept of simultaneous equation. Alright, when we're explaining to the student, we simply say, let's either make the parts the same or the units the same. In this case, let's multiply the entire second statement by 4 so that we can have 4 parts on both sides. Alright, so 1 times 4 is 4, 15 times 4 is 60, and 1 times 4 is 4 again. Now we can see that we have four parts on both sides. What that means is that this and this are actually the same. So let's rewrite that into another statement. 5 units minus 95 is the same as 4 units minus 30. Okay, so the difference between 5 units and 4 units is simply 1 unit. Okay. One unit is the difference between 95 and 60, which would give us 35. Okay, the question is asking us how many men were there in the morning. So in the morning is the before situation, and that gives us 5 units. So 5 units would be 35 times 5, which gives us? 175. And that's our answer to this question. Now let's take a look at another question where we have an everything changed ratio and we also have to apply the method of units and parts. This question is taken from ACS prelim paper from last year and it is worth 4 marks. The ratio of the number of marbles Ryan had to the number of marbles Audrey had at first was 2 to 7. After Ryan bought another 20 marbles and Audrey gave away 80 marbles, the ratio of the number of marbles Ryan had to the number of marbles Audrey had became 1 to 3. How many marbles did Audrey have at first? Now, in this question, we can also see that everything has changed, all right? The number of marbles Ryan had before and after is different, and the number of marbles Audrey had before and after is also different. Therefore, we cannot apply constant sight or constant total. How about equal difference? We can see that Ryan gained 20 marbles, but Audrey lost 80 marbles. So we also cannot apply equal difference. Everything has changed in this ratio. So we have to use the same method of units and parts to solve this question. Let's go ahead and use the BCA model again. Before, change, and after. The ratio in the before situation is 2 to 7. Now since Ryan bought 20 more marbles, he would have 20 marbles more. Alright, so we, we write a plus 20 over here. As for Audrey, she gave away 80 marbles, so she would have 80 marbles less. Therefore, minus 80. The ratio became 1 is to 3 in the after situation. Okay, so same thing. We're going to use units to represent before. And we're going to use parts to represent after. Now let's rewrite the ratios in a statement form. Okay, for Ryan, he had 2 units of marbles at first. And he bought another 20 marbles, which gives him one part of marbles after. 
As for Audrey, she had 7 units of marbles at first, then she gave away 80 marbles and is left with 3 parts of marbles after. Now we have to use simultaneous equation again. So as I've mentioned, when we're explaining to the student, we just say that we want to make the parts the same or the units the same. In this case, it is so much easier to make one part into three parts, right? Simply multiplying the equation by three. All right, so two times three gives us six units, okay? And then 20 times three gives us 60. One times three gives us Three. So now we have made both sides the same. And what that would mean is that 7u minus 80 is the same as 6u plus 60. And we write that down. Okay, so the difference between 7u and 6u is 1 unit. Okay, now at this point, we know that when we change side, we have to change sign, right? So 80 minus 80 would become plus 80 on this side. Therefore, 1 unit is equal to 140. Okay, since the question is asking us how many marbles did Audrey have at first, Audrey has 7 units at first, right? So 7 units is equal to 140 times 7, which would give us 980. And that's our answer for this question. Now, before we end this video, I know you must be thinking about this part. Yes, in primary 6, right, the students have not learned how to change the sign when we're changing sides. So, how do we explain this to them? Because most students would actually use 80 minus 60. Alright, in this case, we need to draw a model so that they can visualize this concept over here, all right? So now let's draw the model so that the student can visualize this concept much better. 7u minus 80. We simply draw a long bar, okay? 7 units minus 80. So that would give us 80 here. And 7 units. Alright, so 7u minus 80 is this portion. Alright, so this portion here, 7 units minus 80, is the same as 6 units plus 60. Which means this portion here is also the same as 6 units plus 60. So we transfer this line upwards. Alright? And this part is also 60. Now, since this bar is 7 units and this bar here is 6 units, alright, that would mean that this area here is 1 unit. Okay? And we can see that 1 unit is made up of 2 parts, 60 plus 80. Therefore, 1 unit is 60 plus 80 which is 140. So, if you're finding it hard to explain the concept of changing sign, what you can do is to encourage the student to draw the model for better visualization. I hope this series of tutorials on ratio has been helpful to you. If you have any questions for me or have any suggestions as to what kind of topics you'd like to see me explain in upcoming videos, please leave a comment in the comment box below. Also subscribe to this channel for more free tutorials.